Let's talk about my 13 inch MacBook Pro M2 pre-order experience, the configuration that I got to run a test in my studio, and some of the reasons why I think Apple didn't update the design for this specific computer. This is Artist Right. Before we start, subscribe if you're new and hit on the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I upload cool new videos like this. Let's start out with the pre-order experience. Apple made these machines available for pre-order a few days ago, and the time zone I happen to be in is specific time zone, and the time that it's available is 5 a.m. I really don't like it when Apple released a machine that early in the morning because I generally go to sleep very late at night because I'm either filming, editing, or doing some photo editing of some sort. So by the time I got to bed, I only have about an hour to an hour and a half of sleep before I have to get up again to pre-order these machines. And obviously I want to pre-order these because I want to have a machine to test in the studio to see how the M2 is performing. So with that being said, 5 a.m. comes, well, the website wasn't even available. You can't add the computer to cart. Around 10 minutes later, you can now add the base model to the cart. So I've gone through with that, purchase it, and now I want to add two more configurations. I want to get the 16 and also the 24 gigabytes of memory to run the test as well. For the next hour, up until around 6 a.m., that was not available. I can't add to cart, I refresh it, I've tried it on different machines. I also even try it on, for example, my cell phone connection. None of those were working. So I decided to go back to bed. I got up again about an hour and a half later around 7.30 because I have an appointment to go to. And pretty much it was available, so I order all those in. So based on this information alone, what I have coming into the studio's R3 configuration for the M2 machine. All of them will have 256 gigabytes of memory because these are just only test machines or not something I'm gonna be using on a daily basis. But I have one with the eight gigabytes of memory coming in, 16 gigabytes, and also a 24 gigabytes of memory coming in. As you start to see, the moment you go in and add memory or add the storage to this machine, doing any type of custom configuration, the ship date is starting to slip. For example, my 16 gigabyte machine is supposed to be coming in early July, but right now, based on what I'm seeing on their website, is saying that it's going to be coming in early August. The 24 gigabyte is still coming in in early August. So these machines are gonna be arriving at the studio staggeredly. So we'll be testing them out and I'll be slowly releasing the information as I get them. So I have been giving this some thought and here are some of the reasons why I think Apple didn't update the design for the 13 inch MacBook Pro M2. Obviously, we're not gonna get Apple to publicly comment on this. However, here are some of my opinions. Starting out with the design. If they have changed the design, the conversation will be focused on the design and a new color, such as the one in the new MacBook Air that is coming out. And Apple does not want this. What they want is a conversation to focus on the M2 ship performance, very similar to the M1 launch cycle, where we have the 13 inch MacBook Pro, the MacBook Air, and also the Mac Mini without any redesign whatsoever. The chassis is the same, so the only thing we can really talk about is the ship and the performance. And that is exactly what they are doing with this M2 cycle. This machine is also coming two weeks earlier than the MacBook Air or maybe even more. So this is really focusing our conversation on just M2 because there's not so much to talk about the machine really. Now, we may wonder why Apple choose to keep the 13 inch MacBook Pro design the same and maybe not the MacBook Air. And that has to do with active cooling. Inside the 13 inch MacBook Air, there is a fan on the logic board that will actively cool the ship down. This way we can get to see the real performance of the M2 ship. And they want us to really see the M2 ship performance on a machine that will have minimal thermal throttling. If they have put this on, for instance, the MacBook Air, obviously because there is no fan inside the MacBook Air, it is going to be passive cooling only. Obviously, there are going to be some thermal throttling that may happen on that machine specifically. And that's the reason why Apple decided to just pretty much keep the 13 inch MacBook Pro design the same. A couple other reasons as well is that, well, they have been using that design for years now. The majority of a CNC machine and everything are already made to go. They just have to do some minor retooling to adjust for the components internally on the new MacBook Pro and you're ready to go. Now, the other thing too is because Apple have also bumped up the price on their new MacBook Air. And if we take a look at this in general, I think it will be very difficult for Apple to come in and say, well, if we redesign this, we want to bump the price of this up a little bit more. Like where would the price really falls? Because if they increase the price anymore on the 13 inch MacBook Pro, 
the price is gonna really start to come up to the 14 inch MacBook Pro with the M1 Pro already. So I think what they're trying to also do at the same time is create some differentiation in pricing so that you have the option to really go in and choose what you want. Now, a couple of things about this that I want to mention is that if you are going to get this machine, this 13 inch MacBook Pro, and you want to use it in any type of pro photography workflow, whether you're just starting out or you're doing this professionally, you just want a light machine to use on the road, I highly recommend upgrading it to at least 16 gigabytes of memory because let's put it this way, eight gigabytes is not a lot of memory. And the moment you either launch Lightroom or Photoshop, it is going to really shoo up that memory extremely quickly. So going with 16 gigabytes is not bad. However, I would personally just recommend going with 24 because the memory inside these machine are pretty much linked to the ship and they're not upgradable down the road. So you want to have the most memory possible, especially if you plan to keep this machine longer. Now, with that being said, I also want to talk about one more thing about the Unify memory too. There has been a lot of talk and conversation about Unify memory. Yes, it is fast, but it doesn't mean magic memory. Meaning that if your program or your app that you're using requires memory, either 16 or 24 gig, and it can use up that much memory, it's going to use that memory anyway. So just because you have a unified memory, it's not a magical memory that suddenly will expand or anything. It's just a really fast memory that is shared between the CPU and GPU. So just some thoughts about that. But as I already shared with you, I will have the machine with all the memory configuration in the CEO to run the test. So you're gonna really find out which one you may wanna get for your workflow. Now, the other thing I wanna also point out is that for these, M2 notebooks, if you go in to upgrade the memory, for instance, from an eight gigabyte to 24 gigabyte, you're paying $400 for this. And I made the argument in my previous video that on a 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pro, and I would argue also for the M1 Pro and M1 Mac, but more so for the 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pro, when you pay $400 more, you're getting 32 gigabytes of memory instead of just 24. And I said a lot, something along the line that Apple is charging more for memory. A few of my viewers point out that, well, Apple is not really charging more for memory. They're still charging $400 for 16 gigabyte, which is still a lot of money. But what they are doing in this situation is that these machines start out with eight gigabytes of memory instead of 16. So at the very base, it starts out with less memory. So when we add it, it doesn't come up to quite the same. I totally understand the sentiment. However, when I really look at it, the numbers this way, it's kind of somewhat disappointing that, you know, you're paying about the equivalent amount of money, but you're starting out with less RAM in the beginning and you're not really going to reach kind of the same height that the 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pro has to offer in terms of memory. Granted, those machines are definitely more expensive than these machines in general, but I would say that if we start to add things up on these machine and make it equivalent, I mean, for instance, let's go with like the 16 gigabyte and 512 gigabyte SSD. We're looking at a $1,700 machine. This is almost equivalent to the base 14 inch MacBook Pro M1 Pro with the eight CPU, 14 GPU. So it's within pretty much about $300 difference of that machine. And this is what I was talking about earlier about the price differentiation that I think Apple can't really bring the price of this machine up anymore. Otherwise it's really impeding on the territory of these real big time pro machine to have the mini LED and everything. But anyway, Stay tuned to the channel. We're gonna get those machine in to run the tests. And as soon as I have them in, I'll be running crazy tests on them. I'll be publishing the result as we go. So you're gonna find that out really soon in my real world photography test, how these M2 ship perform. And I'm really curious if this M2 ship is going to beat out the base 14 inch M1 Pro with the eight CPU, 14 GPU. I mean, that would be a really great conversation to have and a really great result to see. If you have any questions or comment, anything you'd like me to test specifically, leave them in the comment section below. Give this a like, subscribe and hit on the bell if you're new and in Art We Trust.